depression. Yes. What y'all say? Yes. 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 People, boy, bad, they're going to think y'all say folks in here. Yes. Yes. You know, sometimes we don't really understand how valuable praise is. But when you can praise in the midst of adversity. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes. Anybody can praise everything is going good. That's right, Pastor. Yes, yes. But when you can praise in the midst of adversity, that's when that really that praise on. I think that's really when God really say he inhabits the praises of it. Not when things are going great, but things were going bad. And I, I, I can see God sitting in the manger of a seat. The whole bottom part of the seat. That, that would make Job so good. He stuck with God no matter what was going on. Sometimes we have to go through stuff so we can let God know, in spite of what I see, because your words say, I don't walk by sight. I got to walk by faith. That, that's when God sent the ministry angels. Give them what they need and give it to them now. Somewhere I read, and y'all read it too, it said he yes. watches over his word yes, to perform. And his word, when it's being performed, when everything else looks like it's going in disarray, is when God gets excited. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, I tell you what. Pure gold has to be tried by the fire. To do what? Test his pure. How do you know how great uh, your faith is unless you got to go through a, a part in your life? Yeah. And now we're talking about the storms of life. That we were talking about this morning. We, we were talking about Charles Stanley this morning about the storms of life. And you're right. That wasn't the scripture. That wasn't, that wasn't the right word. He was quoting. It's a different interpretation. But we got to realize as believers, we have to stand tall in the midst of adversity. Sometimes it's not always easy because your flesh wants to submit. But in spite of your flesh, you're supposed to bring your flesh under subjection to the word. Isn't that what the scripture tells us? It says you must die daily. What? Not your spirit, but your flesh. That was it. You must die daily. You. As I was trying to complete this lesson, I'm trying to. It was an important part I was looking at in entering it, ceasing, uh, entering to God's rest. Turn to verse chapter, Hebrews 4. I'm going to get to this right quick, right now. Boy, got to get that praise on. Yes, Lord. When you, look here. Instead of cussing, you need to be praising. Amen. <laughs> You, you ride in water, cussing, everything. You, that's what you need to be getting your praise on. Oh, goodness. You be so mad. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, no, get your praise on. Oh, but tell you, like Sister Alfreda said, somebody taught her last week, peace, be still. <laughs> Sometimes you got to sit there and just say it, peace. Somebody walk into your face, make you mad, make you angry. Make you want to go back to the old man and the old woman. You need to be saying peace. People will take you back though. They will take you back. And you know something? And it's really not them taking you back. It's really indicating where you really are in the word. Because if people can say a little thing to get you back, that's not them. That's you. That means that you really haven't grown in the word like you're supposed to. If anybody can say a little thing and it take you back to your old man, that is not them. Only because see that can come from anybody. But the mere fact that that's being said and you responded to it in a negative way, that's you. The Bible says, be it unto you. Your faith. That's unto you. If your faith has made you whole, why you let somebody break you up and divide you? Amen. That's you. You can't allow yourself to go backwards when you're supposed to be moving forward. Amen. If the Bible says now faith is, it isn't going to be, or maybe now faith is. If 
and you hoping for the best in life, and you still trying to live the worst in life, that's right. you. That's it. Amen. Last time I read, and you know, Reverend Pearson, he, he's a stickler on making sure you do it right now. Yeah. yeah, he don't want you just misquoting stuff. Because that, that, that one misquote can get you going backwards. So you want to say it right so that you got somebody backing you up. Because God going to honor his word, yes, not your interpretation of his word. That's right. That's right. Are y'all listening to that? Amen. God going to honor his word and not your interpretation yes. of his word. Amen. You take one step, God said, you take one step, he'll take two. He ain't gonna let, that's your interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to move forward in saying, saying and doing what he, exactly what he told you to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The challenge here over in Hebrew, you know why folks not resting? They don't know how to get into a rest. I, I'm learning how to snore and double snore. I'm learning how to do say precious. Hey, hey, hey it, it's no good sleep until you start snoring. <laughs> now, I, I understand some of y'all might be wearing your seat pack and all that. That's good. But when you get into that double snore, oh, yeah, you're in a good sleep. <laughs> I know it's the patty you too. Hey, wait up. Wake me out of good sleep. That's double snow. Nothing like a double snow. <laughs> and once you lose it, hard to get back to it. But it's a rest. And we've got to learn how to rest in him. In him. Faith is a rest. It really is. And so that we miss it. God, God didn't free you to put you in disarray. Wow. He freed you to put you at peace. Wow. That's why Jesus called the prince of peace, not the prince of disarray. <laughs> so, sometimes when we, when we go back in disarray, it's mean that we're trying to give up our peace. But he says the peace is passive. She'll do what? It she keeps you. And you, you need to, sometimes we need to be kept. Sometimes we're not good at keeping our own self. Let's face it. Sometimes we allow ourselves to be unkept. Now, I'm going to use you, I know that term, unkept. How do you allow yourself to be unkept by not standing in the word? The only thing will keep you is the word. What will, keep you, will get you unkept is you start doing that private interpretation stuff. That can't keep you like the word, because it wasn't sent to keep you. The word was sent to heal and deliver, Amen. not unkept interpretations. But the challenge here, do we always study to show ourselves what? That our work we may be able to rightly divide the word of what? Truth. Everything that's true is not the truth. Amen. Amen. Sure, God will, you know, and, and we use this term a lot, and, and don't get me wrong. We say, once you know the truth, the truth, I mean, there's two things we say, set you free and make you free. But what it does, see, to set something means that, you know, that, that it, it's there, but to make you, it means that it's taken over. Amen. And sometimes, you know, I can set this up here and say, okay, that all is set there for you. It's, it's sitting right there. But when I start making you use it and you start being made on you, it's a whole different interpretation. The word was sent. Once you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. That means it's taken over. Now, now you're in a position to walk in the blessings of God. Don't set it up. You know? And I'm not still made what I need to be made. One of the things here, let me get to this right here because I really like I really like that song. So I'm sorry, for the last one you said. Uh, it says Hebrews four, chapter four, and, and, and that first verse I keep dwelling with that. It says, "Let us therefore fear." 
there's a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should see to come short of it. This week, don't raise your hand. Kick your feet up. I mean, y'all felt y'all came short this week because some of you, right? some of you, 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 you're peaceful rest. All because you allow something to get to you that wasn't supposed to get to you. Yeah. Don't raise your hand. Kick your feet up. <laughs> the word is designed to make you whole. You can't be made whole until you allow all of the word to flow through you. You don't need part of you whole and the other part half kept. Because as a man think of what? So is he. We got too many half walking Christians. I'm going to use that as an expression. Believing half of the promises and not all of the promises. You got to be made whole. How, how, how many of y'all want to want to have half of a friend? Yeah. On there it says, well, <laughs> or half half of a mate. You want to be old, don't you? You work for full four hour week, and somebody give you half of a check. Yeah, I said I figured how to get you. I know how y'all are. <laughs> you said they related to that right quick. Then everything else, they, everything else, they, mm, I said it's half a check. Well, <laughs> we're allowing only half of the promises to live. That's why we can't rest. God said, and James talked about you being entire. And in whole, wanting nothing. That's what James talked about, doesn't it? Hallelujah. But but it's based on you receiving all of God's word into your life, and allow all of it to live and dwell in you. See, you can't be at full peace until you fully allow the word to be there. But we 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 have this tendency. To still want to do our own thing. Let me help you with that one. As we read that particular passage, that scripture, verse 9 says, drop down here quickly. It says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. He says like that. Remain up. Sound like something still, some stuff being left over. Amen. Some stuff not being fully. He said, "Remain up." It, it, it's like when you go to a, a, a eat your, eat your uh, you know, you eat your meal. Then somebody tell you, oh, you, you got some of your meat remaining or some of your vegetable remaining. That means you still got some stuff you haven't consumed. Y'all read that before? Why? There remain a fear for a rest to the people of God. To really understand that, you go back up a couple of verses and see what he's really saying. Well, let's backtrack to verse 8. Slow, we're going to slow walk. We're going to slow walk. We're going to walk backwards just a little bit. Now, this is how I want you to walk backwards on this. I want you walking backwards looking forward. I don't want you turning around now going back. I want you to back up looking forward. Because you got you to keep your eyes forward. You got to keep your spirit moving forward. But I just want you to step backwards. Amen? He says here, he said, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not after have spoken of another day? You know where your rest come from? You. 
It says, Jesus, if Jesus had given them rest. See, what, what that, when you start to think, you got to let that digest. If Jesus have given you rest. Well, we know Jesus gave us everything. Giving is one thing. Receiving is another. Now, he gave it, but how much of stuff do we actually receive? Some stuff I can give you, but it's up to you to allow it to. I can give a person a meal, but seal up to them need it. Well, if the pastor had given me a meal, I wouldn't be starving. Well, I gave you the meal, but you didn't eat it. See, I've got to let you look at this from your perspective. God said he sent his word to what? Heal and deliver. So if God has sent his word to heal and deliver, how come all of us not healed and delivered? The word ain't true. God, while thou words it, all men be made liars. And let my word be made what? Because God is not a man. He's your what? So that means that we're not receiving everything that's been given to us. That sounds crazy in the natural. Somebody's giving this to you, and yet it's still, you still like it in it. It's crazy, doesn't it? But it's the truth. It's the truth. If you're lacking, it's because of you, not because of God. Jesus said he come to give you life and give it to you what? More, not just abundantly, more abundantly. So we don't have an abundant life. It's something that we are not receiving Amen. to get there. Amen. Let all men be made liar, but let God's word be made true. The peace that passes what? Oh, yeah. Shall keep your heart and your mind. Through Christ Jesus. But he said the anointed Jesus. Anointing. It takes the anointing to destroy the yoke. Yes, but so that we forget we are anointed one. We call us a Christian. That word Christian means anointed one. But yet and still, we forget we are anointed. And we don't exercise that anointing. This is why God tells you when you're going through things, physician heals ourselves. We all put to be physician spiritually. Amen. Why? Great is he that's in you than he that's what? In the world. But he's talking about the anointing that's in you. Why else would he tell you to call those things even though they be not as though they are? He wouldn't, he wouldn't say, tell you to say that unless he's giving you the power to do that. Amen. that. Let that resonate with you now. He wouldn't tell you to say that unless he's giving you the power to do that. Call those things even though they be not as though they are. You know, we call, we call almost the negative stuff running the positive thing. Well, I just don't know. Woe's me. <laughs> We're snared. That's right. Taken. But the challenge is, as believers, we have to begin to align our spirit. And I use that term now. Our spirit with this word. Because see what it is. The real you, if it's not coming forth, aligning itself, the real word, you're going to find yourself saying in and all things that's yeah. going to take you back. Yeah. Why? Is a man think of I'm about the spiritual you. This is the verse I was trying to get down to. Look at verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath what? Let the kids say, bam, there it is. <laughs> I 
I know the song said, oops. You know what I'm saying? Bam. <laughs> A lot of stuff you can't enter into God's record. You ever see from your own works. You still trying to do stuff your way. You still trying to make fool of your way. How can you enter in God's rest when you ain't seen from your own stuff? The word, let me, let me say this now. Now, y'all heard this, but I want y'all to resonate this into you. The word won't serve two masters. Forgive me, brother. Now, <laughs> the word won't serve. This is why we're lukewarm in our rest. We're trying to live and get the word to serve two masters through unkept private interpretation of what we think the word's supposed to be doing. You're not going to be at rest because the word can't work for you fully if you're trying to get it to do it your way. From your works. Well, but you know what? Uh, you know, I thought, well, 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 maybe. Uh, uh, but God don't need your help. Last time I read, God created you. All of a sudden, you got the creator saying, uh, creation. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to what? Acknowledge him. And he will what? He will direct it. When, you, when you're not ceasing from your own work, you are still trying to direct your path. And only thing I got to say, if you're not resting because you're trying to direct your path, how is that going for you? <laughs> huh? Now, in life, just like on the road, cause this, this, this road of life, this highway of life we live it on, it, it's certain uh, rules when you're driving in it. You know, you, you, you park in the wrong spot, you get a parking one. You know? Don't pay the parking tic ticket. They come back in. You get what on your car? Some of y'all done parked in the wrong place, and now you can't move now because y'all done messed around. D didn't pay the fine. Now you got a boot on your life. Can't move. You stuck in that same spot all because you didn't pay the fine. Well, why do I pay the fine? By start getting yourself lined back with the word. First John said, first John 1 and I said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful just to what? And cleanse you. Okay, I got the boot off, but the car won't start. Why? I've been sitting too long. Why have they been sitting so long? Because I, I ran out of fuel. The fuel dissipated. How do I get the fuel back in? Get the word back in. That's your fuel. Well, I got it full of gas, but I turned it, and it won't start. Got the battery dead. <laughs> Why about the battery dead? Because as a man think of. Faith comes from the heart. You can't start and you full of gas. You got the boot off, but you can't crank nothing up. Why? You can't, you can't jump something 
nothing. Well, you know, Pastor said and Reverend Pearson said, well, I heard what they said, but what do you believe? Mm. Be it unto you. If I go another 10 minutes, we're about to take a double offering. Our people look for the deep stuff to yeah, try to yeah. figure out their life. The deep stuff, I tell you, that it's the simple stuff that we all are supposed to know. Yeah. We're not activating the simple stuff. Hey, if come up out here and hear by the word of God. If you could just believe, be it unto you according to faith. Trust in all and lean not to what? Oh. Acknowledge Him. And he would just what? The word won't serve two masters. This is not Alexander. No, no, Edgar Allan Poe, I'm sorry. What was that thing? Uh, I'm the captain of my ship or the brother of my. What was that? Uh, what? Yeah, I'm the captain of my ship, but knowledge of my faith. What was that thing Egg Allen Poe said? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm the master of my, the captain of my ship and the master of my faith. You, you don't let Poe's interpretation mess you up with God's interpretation. God will be the head of your life. You've been kept in your ship too long. Amen. You've been trying to master your faith too long. It's got to be the word. It has to be the word. If the word is not leading and directing your life, then you're out of the will of God and you're trying to serve two masters. As I was reading this, I kept looking. I said, now, Father, why? In verse 10, somebody read verse 10. And somebody got to amplify, read that for me, too. Read it one. Just read, just read it aloud. What the amplifier read? We don't realize that sometimes, unbeknown to yourself, you are laboring it and you're working hard to still do it your way. Why? Why, Why come to God when you're going to still try to force it and still labor trying to do it your way? If you're going to do it your way, don't even go to God. Because now if it don't happen, then you're trying to put it on God. Yeah. Well, you know, the word don't work. God is never going to bless your mess. The word won't serve two masters. God watches over his word, not your word, to perform. If we read earlier, it said there is a, a rest to the people of God. Amen. But I said to the people of God. Amen. Everybody who walked the earth are not God's people. He said to the people of God. How do you know when you're a person of God, people of God? You're a disciple. You're followers of Christ. Yeah. Amen. That's what God sent him so you can have an example, a road map. That's why I tell you, say, let this mind be what? That's also where? 
Sometimes we forget, and Christ always said, I can do nothing of my own, but that what I see of my father. He never got beyond his father. Everything he did, it was based on what he saw his father do. Amen. So what makes you think you can do anything different? Amen. Then you wonder why God's not blessing you. No, you're hindering your own blessing. So, so simple. It's so simple that it's hard. For some reason, we look for the hard way rather than the good way, the easy way. Why? Men love darkness. We're used to struggling and struggling and, and, and falling down and getting back up and all this stuff here. And you figured out, you, you became born again. Yes. Old things are what? Yes. All things would become what? Yes. And yet it's here, you're still trying to pour old wine. Yes. What the old wine? The way you used to do stuff. Yes. Into this new born again life. Yes. Therefore, a lot of stuff have not passed away. You know what it's like? You know, I love, I love analogies. It, it, it's like, you know, we're doing the final leg of a homegoing service, right? The brethren, the pallbearer, they walk around, putting it on the thing, getting ready to lower into the ground, get halfway in the ground, and all of a sudden the casket fly open. The person jump out, hey, okay, let me do my two more years. Now, that sounds crazy that somebody you about to lower down into the ground. All of a sudden, right before you get halfway, the cats can fly up and they jump back so they're going to do two more years. Uh-huh. Does that sound crazy? Yeah. That's what a lot of us do. Same. When we're supposed to be dead to ourselves, supposed to be trying to bury this thing, so you're not going to let it get totally buried because if it's buried, it's gone. Yeah. But before it gets totally buried, even though it's getting lowered, you pop back up, oh, let me give him two more years. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. If old things have passed away, Amen. that's the only way things can become new in your life. Amen. Don't put your hands back to the plow. You've got to learn how to move forward. Amen. Amen. I, I read this and still trying to digest part of this. I'm going to do verse 11 because I'm 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 I, I was trying to complete this thing here, but I see right now I'm not. Verse 11 says, let us, look what it says, labor. You got to work in this. Faith without what? It says, let us labor therefore to enter. You've got to do this. Does any man fall after the same example? Don't say you in faith and you and you still trying to do it your old man's way. What that scripture says that you need to fight the good fight of what? This is what it's trying to encompass. In order for you to enter into the rest, you've got to fight the good fight of faith. Because faith is a rest. Faith is a rest. But you've got to, you got to fight the good fight of faith to get that rest. Amen. If you not find it, the devil, uh, you allow yourself to uh, ease back in. Next thing you know, you pushing that casket open and jumping back to the old man. Jesus says, I come to give you life and give it to you more. He meant just that. He meant just that. But it's up to us to receive. It's up to us to realize that everything to pertain to abundant life has already been sent to us. Amen. It's up to us to receive. That's in your hands.
That's why Jesus, every time somebody got healed, they went to think of Jesus, and Jesus looked at them and said, be it unto you according to your faith. Some people say, well, but, but, but. He said, no, 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 no. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. It's a time for us to allow our faith to make us whole. It isn't a time for us to get this stuff out of our mind about what, 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 what's not going to happen or what did happen. Why can't you sit there and, let, and rest in God and let him show you what's going to happen? Trust in him. He said he will never leave you. And the Bible said every good and perfect gift from the Father of light. He's going to put the light on that darkness that's trying to get you. That's trying to get you. <laughs> He's going to do it for you. But we got to trust him. We got to trust him. Three simple words for you this week again. Peace be still. That's got to be the beginning of you stepping out and trusting in God's word. Because as soon as the stuff come your way, you know it's trying to get you sidetracked. They're trying to get you to get the word to try to serve two masters. You got to first say, peace, be still. You're telling your flesh, no, I'm not buying it. I'm not going with it. Peace. And allow the word to come in. He said he sent it to what? Deliver. Why not allow it to do what it was sent to do? You're holding it back. See, it won't override your will. It won't override your will. You can tell God where to stop, and it won't enter. Because your will is involved. That sounds crazy. Well, God can do anything. He can do anything but override your will. He for people, he, he created us to serve him because we wanted to, not because we had to. Man just have to serve him because they have to. Right. Yeah. But we have to serve him because we want to. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to leave you with these words. Choose this day wow. who you're going to serve. Let's pray.